Hello, and thank you for joining another edition of Sony Pro Live. My name is Dion LeCoint. I am the Senior Manager for Sports and IP Solutions at Sony Electronics Professional Solutions of America. Today's topic is what's new in IP. And this is part of our continuing webinar on IP live production and the trend that we are seeing in the broadcast and content creation market where content creators are using COTS architecture and media over IP technology to build end-to-end -end IP based production systems. If you take a look at this chart provided by the Joint Task Force on Network Media, it shows the roadmap for networked media open interoperability. There are a number of milestones set, and a number of those milestones have already been hit, including those involving elementary flows for audio, video, and metadata across COTS architecture. Those can be seen in the SMPTE 2110 specification. Today, we're going to be talking about network and resource management and the protocols and specifications that really speak to connecting many devices from multiple vendors together on the same IP topology and ensuring that they have the right control from the broadcast network controller. We're going to talk to the efforts of the Advanced Media Workflow Association, also known as AMWA, and their Networked Media Open Specifications, also known as NMOS. Three of those specifications in particular are IS04, IS05, and IS06, which each cover different elements of the open media specifications. IS04 talks to discovery and registration. IS05 speaks to connection management, and IS06 speaks to network control. 04 and 05 have already been released, and we expect 06 to be released by the end of this calendar year. IS04 specifies APIs to allow network connected devices to register their resources on a shared registry, and for client applications to query the registry and subscribe to updates. In layman's terms, it effectively allows for edge devices or endpoints to connect to the topology and announce their presence and what features and functionality they offer to the broadcast network controller. From a visual perspective, it'll look something like this. You have a broadcast network controller, like the LSM from Sony, connected to your COTS network architecture, made up of your network switches. When a endpoint device, like a studio camera or a production switcher or a production monitor, are connected to that topology, they announce the type of device that they are, their manufacturer, and what resources they have available. For example, a studio camera may announce that I am a 4K HD camera that's capable of supporting high dynamic range and high frame rate production. A production switcher may announce that I am a 4K capable switcher that also supports high dynamic range production and remote IP production as well. ISO 5, on the other hand, really talks to the connection, disconnection, and reconnection of those endpoint devices to the network topology. Imagine disconnecting a USB drive from a computer and reconnecting it. ISO 5 effectively does the same thing. So going back to our system, which has the broadcast network controller communicating with these devices, imagine that you now extend your network by adding additional nodes in different areas throughout your facility. You move the studio camera to one node and you move the production switcher to another node. ISO 5 effectively identifies the movement, identifies that this is a device that has already been registered on the network and has already announced its available resources, but now it tells the broadcast network controller that these devices are connected to a different network segment and a different network switch port. ISO 6 speaks to network control and it specifies how to discover network and endpoint topology, authorize low-level senders, receivers, network flows, create, modify, and delete those network flows, and also reserve those network resources. One of the big things that ISO 6 will bring to the table is the ability for a single network controller to control multiple endpoint devices, no matter what manufacturer. In today's environment, if you take a look at this system diagram, 
you can see a Sony LSM broadcast network controller communicating with other Sony devices on the network. If you introduce third-party devices, let's say from Acme Company, then you also must have the Acme broadcast network controller in the environment to communicate with those devices. The Acme broadcast network controller communicates with its devices and also communicates with the Sony LSM to ensure cohesive communication across all nodes on the network. When ISO 6 is released, it will allow for a single broadcast network controller to communicate with devices from its own manufacturer or from devices from another manufacturer as well, allowing us to achieve this, an end-to-end -end IP based production system with production devices from multiple vendors all being controlled by a single broadcast network controller. Cameras, switchers, production servers, monitors, graphics, audio, all living together and working together cohesively in a single IP production environment. For more information on NMOS, please feel free to visit the Sony website at sony.com slash IPLive and download a copy of the IPLive technical white paper. You can also visit nmos.tv or amwa.tv. That's all for now. I'll catch you next time.